the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Does anything need to be amended or are we good to approve as written? No, Energy Committee contacted me and they want to be postponed for a, to a future meeting. Maybe the next meeting, but it depends um, if they get Apparently they have other changes they want to make to the purchasing policy, which they didn't state submit the first time. So okay. I told them. Okay. So that's it. So oh wait, no, that's more. under American Rescue Plan. I want to talk about issuing an RFP for the sewer pipe sewer. Pumps, I'm thinking oh, pipes. I'm like, help pumps. me out here. Well, <laughs> sewer, <laughs> sewer pumps. I didn't think where you were trying to I get know, to. I'm like, pipes, sewer pumps, and the generator. So that's just, I mean, it's still part of the discussion, but. Yeah. Okay, but so yeah, all we it. effectively did was we. Moved uh, energy. We uh, deleted the appointment for 615 for the energy committee, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Move to approve. I, I have a little comment about this road, but we probably I can do that on a public comment quickly. Sure. sure, yeah, either that or other business, wherever you want to do it. Okay. Okay, just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay. Moved. All in favor? Aye. Doing seconds tonight. I guess so. We're doing seconds. That's how you know I'm back. That's right. <laughs> doing seconds. All right. So Chuck's not here yet. Nope. So we'll just. Um, We'll just keep an eye out for Chuck when he shows up. We'll just go back to him if everybody's good with that. We'll just move up to public comment. Is there any public comment this evening? Whopping two people here. There so is a gentleman here tonight. Make sure you guys get in line. <laughs> no, no stampeding to the front. So, and just make sure that um, during public comment session, depending on who's taking the notes, make sure that your, your name and sometimes address of where you live. So. <coughs> I appreciate you folks uh, allowing me time to come down here and, and uh, introduce myself. I am James Key, uh, Vermont Certified Beekeeper on Board of Directors of the BBA as well as on Advisory Board. Uh, I used to work at UVM Medical Center uh, a couple of years ago when COVID broke out. I decided to live my full-time life dream and that is being a bee farmer as well as a honeybee breeder. Um, I've just now received a grant to uh, breed Queen Bees through Penn State University. Uh, been featured in Bee Culture Magazine. Uh, did a self-design major through Norwich. Uh, graduated at Norwich University. Um, I also love farmers markets and that's where I sell my honey uh, and beehive products. Uh, the reason I'm here, I've been speaking with Kelly as well as uh, meeting folks from the community through uh, Bethel's uh, Forward Fest as well as Pitfields Fest. I've also been doing Randolph's Farmer's Market, as well as South Rollton's Farmer's Market. And in meeting a couple of folks through the different town uh, festivals, uh, someone had mentioned to me that Bethel's Farmer's Market had just pretty much vanished and sort of, sort of deceased uh, from the farmer's market in COVID. So uh, to put it simply, Barb and a few other people asked for myself if I wanted to spearhead it and try to revamp and get it going again. Um, and I volunteer to do it. You know, I love working with community on a variety of events. I do things with Vermont Law School, speaking engagements about uh, honeybees, the importance of honeybees in farming, et cetera. I work with leading commercial beekeepers in the state of Vermont, uh, Chaz Moraz, the Moraz family, Michael Palmer, et cetera, et cetera. But long story, I'm here to, uh, uh, as Kelly suggested, come here and try to seek some uh, contribution towards uh, minor things like a banner and or uh, some sort of aesthetics to toward, sort of like attract people as they go by. Um, I'm revitalizing a sandwich board sign that was sort of dilapidated, but I'm revitalizing that and repainting and so forth. And out of my own pocket, making some sort of con contributions. I placed together a couple of flyers, which Kelly has posted um, through various sites for Bethel. Um, Long story short, I, I live just across over at Stockbridge, just across Gaysville Bridge. Um, but, uh, you know, I do things in the town next door to y'all in my neighborhood. So I'm here to, uh, as Kelly, you know, said, I could try to do, and that is to seek some donations and or contributions uh, for a banner 
and or small things that uh, will attract you know, the kids, the families, and so forth. It's gonna be introduced as a farmer's market slash fee market, and we're not charging uh, a fee to the vendors. Uh, we are asking vendors based on conditions that will have to, uh, a group of volunteers who will be, you know, like myself, uh, a leader and or a contributor on some level and so forth, well, similar to what you all have, but nothing in concrete, because this again is in the infant stage, in its infancy, so, I'm here to uh, say this is who I am, I'm James Key, and we will begin the process uh, starting May 30th, and we will follow the uh, schedule as it has been every Monday from 3 to 6 p.m. So uh, if you go to the site, I believe uh, that Kelly, she's initiated already and has put forth what I've already you know, printed out, which is a small advertisement. Um, you all can share this. I did not know how many people will be here to help me pass this around and share what I've introduced to the public to sort of draw people there. And again, we're going to, you know, have a, people that will screen so there's not like a junk market. It's very friendly and family oriented. We also really want to try to, you know, make it a fun place for people to come down to on a Monday evening. Nice, yeah, you can advertise on Facebook, the Front Porch Forum, yeah. and, and on our website. It was on Facebook. So oh, it was on Facebook. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, next to the white church. Oh, nice. Like, I thought, and maybe I was just wrong, but I thought we had some sort of banner at one point. Bethel Farmer's there, Market banner. There was banner. a sandwich board sign. I don't know if there was yeah, a banner. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that was yeah. it. Uh, person volunteer to make it a little, little fancy with a nice flower board. And I know traveling around, you go to different towns, you know, I'd say, half the towns anyways have some sort of good advertising yeah, nice banner, if that's banners yeah. or you know so i yeah. you know i don't do you know, know if how that's... much a, any idea how much a banner would cost um you know it depends on how you all would agree on what you would like it to be it could be very plain and simple where it's a white banner with green lettering or it could be something that has you know a, a nice flowery border for something that just features you know a historic town kind of presentation yeah um, but they don't really run more than $100 yeah. for, you know, something that's, you know, pleasing to where it's not, you know, such a, an obstruction where you need to add another device to hold it up. But it fits pretty aesthetically nice with what's already out there. So you would take it up and down? So yes, ma'am. So that, you know, it wouldn't yeah. be, you know, vandalized or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. And like myself, I, I'm, you know, trying to take hold of you know, responsibility of anything that's, you know, the property of, you know, the Bethel's Farmers Market and so forth and so on. No, I think it'd be great if there's talk about expanding it because we have the, where the band shell is now and then there's some other property right next to one at the front of the road that's also town property, so. Um, um, okay. Yeah, because we want to try to uh, invite musicians, yep. you know, nice. play for free, obviously. Uh, we're trying to get anybody that would, you know, bring, you know, some of the farmers also I'm working with on, doing a traffic parade, those kind of things. Uh, you know, the fire, volunteer fire department, because I met a few of them that are also beekeepers. Oh, great. Yeah, so there are a bunch of families that have been doing it, you know, you know, as a family tradition, just like, you know, maple syrup and so forth. So um, there are a lot of people that are excited to be on board. Um, so I'm just, you know, trying to see how you all, all you, you know, select board to be involved as well. And I'm also seeking donations again. Uh, we have the Northeastern Organic Farmers Market. Um, MOFA, they're, all, they're involved with me um, getting grants, and I've already written the Bar Hill uh, liquor that puts out grants to support um, you know people selling honey in our farmers market nice. vendors. So I'm just waiting to hear back from them. Oh. <clears throat> so I'm also you know trying to seek donations, whether it's you know Coke, Pepsi, or whomever will donate um, their time to set up some booth or so forth. The Vermont Beekeepers Association. They're also volunteering to send the information through me so I can set up a, a table. So we want to try to make it where it's a, a community forum, it, you know, more than just a, a vending, you know, try to sell stuff there. I think I want to say that you've maybe already spoken with my wife. Uh, she works for the Center for an Agricultural Economy up in Hardwick. Because I, I know I know of you through her, and yeah. we've we've bought your honey before and stuff. And um, they sometimes do like small scale grants, like 500 to $1,000 
grants for essentially for startup ventures that are agriculture based, which is absolutely what you'd be. So I can your email's here, so I'll sort of have I'll forward it to her and have her reach back out to you and see what see what they might have as well because I know they do it's sort of whatever they have available at the time um, but they may have something that could kind of help propel things a little bit as well great yeah so well first thank you for trying to um, get the farmers market back up and going again um, you know COVID and other things have really um, shot down a lot of um, extracurricular activities that we had going and you know trying to get that back together and it's always it's always hard because you know nobody ever wants to take the point on anything right so yeah. so I appreciate you taking the point on that and so I just want to make sure it, it sounded like but I didn't get it hundred percent from you but it sounded like you were looking for the board to maybe partner on getting a banner is that kind of the or yeah, and the reason why I, you know I, I just don't want to just you know jump in and, and pour you know hard-earned money which I really don't have yeah. I mean I have a lot of energy <laughs> into uh, revitalizing a program that you know has been already established um, that I'm sort of like all right you know I'm sort of fueling it to get it going again so you know I want to try to put as much sweat equity as I can to get it going um, but you know just to see what also what the you know partnership in town would like to put up you know what I mean because it's helping the town as well more than helping myself it's sort of like being a win-win for all of us right I mean typically the the best way to get some action from the board would be to um, think about a specific item that you'd be looking for the town to we'll call it donate Right. I mean, we wouldn't just naturally think of, of a donation normally. It'd be more of like if you proposed the town uh, being a sponsor of, let's say, the banner costs. Yeah. Or just the banner. Then I guess I guess that's just what I would need from you yeah. or or somebody from the board to make a motion on, um, and then we would you know discuss that and and yeah. and uh, you know make. Make it's a decision. Oh. Yeah, we did. We did. We did some for a grant for the downtown. I don't remember if we used rule or or Spalding. I don't remember. Yeah, I have to ask. Well, yeah, I'll ask the tree. But I, I mean, know we can do them. So essentially, you're just looking for a motion. Yeah, I mean, I think so because I mean, I think if we just look for a common donation, we yeah. you know that may or may not ever happen, or right. or in the time frame that you want it to, where if it's more of a specific item motion that we can make to approve and you know I don't know if we say not to exceed a certain amount or you know something like that so that you know you know um, either James or or Therese can look for a, a price at Spalding or somewhere else to get a banner or you know I don't know what we the board thinks but well you know I haven't you know, been to the part of taking exact measurement but you know I'm guessing something that's no longer than you know, from the end of this window to the next end, so you know, between these two windows and length, nothing longer than that. So, you know, at least it can be something that's visible as people are driving by, but not too obstructive. To where you know, people are like, oh wow, I, you know, it's it's you know, making someone that lives around that area going, oh, I don't like it, kind of thing. So, we want to kind of make it an amicable relationship with the community. No, that no, I mean it, it, it will come out of the general fund. So I just would think the work with James to purchase a banner not to exceed a dollar amount. And then we can kind of judge by size once we know how much you know what they cost and we'll right. be able to say, okay, this is how big the banner is because this is how much money we have to spend. Right. So I don't know, I'm a, I can't remember um, what we spent on when we bought those to the other grant, but I. You're probably looking a hundred, two hundred dollars. I'm thinking up to two fifty, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not the banner guy, but. You might you might be able to go them into just a little. Donation out of the. Yeah, out of them, yeah. or help us halfway or type deal. Something. Does it put their name on? Yeah, put their put a stamp on there somewhere. So, something to do that. Yeah, I, I would definitely go that way. Yeah. So what do you think would be a value not to exceed or give us 
you know, 200 or something like that. Yeah. 200 sounds good. Okay. I think that, if you can, especially if you can get them to put their name on it and sure. Maybe help, get it I bigger. think that would do it. Yeah. All right. So who's going to make So we we'll just need a motion to approve the, we'll call it, um, donation to the Bethel Farmer's Market um, for advertising banner not to exceed 200. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. Great. So I'll have Kelly reach out to you, um, James, and uh, I'm slowly Paul, and then um, she can contact some people, get some pricing, and then you'll have an idea of you know how big it can be, that sort of thing. Great. So yeah. You'll know. Yeah. Yeah, make it look great. Absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate you, folks. Yeah. No, it was nice to meet you. I'm so glad you came. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Good Thank you. Take care. Good to see you again. All right. Here also is great. Chuck. Do, do you know, Therese, if typically, um, do towns have budgeting for their farmer's market, or is that typically separate of the town? Or Usually they're separate of the town they have, and they'll usually make the vendors that rent tables, and they kind of pay a fee to the vendor, and then, so it's usually a separate thing. Okay. But I can see what he's trying to do is something a little more, you know, easy, less, sure. you know, so and we'll see what happens. Well, I'm just wondering for budget time, is that... Is that a group that we're missing that maybe should have, I don't know, should be on her, oh, human on ser the services yeah, piece yeah. of it? I don't or know. I guess maybe should be uh, an appropriation to the board? I guess or, we'll have to see how um, you know, he makes I'm, out. Because I'm sure like banners over time need to be replaced or yeah. they probably don't need a lot. Well, we but have, we have a park, park and rec? We do. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah so I don't know where it fits. It's but tight, maybe, but yeah, we'll. Yeah, maybe it fits into something like that. Yeah, yeah, we'll make it. Or work. down the road if we appropriate a little bit of money towards it every year yeah. or something. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, wow. Well, let's do that. We'll start a fund for it. Yeah, all right. Oh. I like that you brought up that there's that strip of land in front that if it grows, you know, that's yeah, yeah, that could area go there. Into, sure. Which is nice to keep in mind. Yep. All right. Um, we're just finishing up public comment right now, um, and then we'll get right to you, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. We just skipped on to public comment, and then we'll we'll get right back to you. So, um, Owen, I think you're the only one left in the public. If you have any comment, other than that, hi everybody, Owen. Um, I guess I'm here as Owen, um, just to let you know that um, we're doing this Pride event. I think Lenny has updated you about that as well. A whole bunch of stuff. Um, but uh, the Bethel Equity and Inclusion Committee did vote to host the movie screening that's going to happen on Sunday. Um, it's going to be actually here at the Town Hall at 2 p.m. So that's going to be Sunday the 26th. Um, and so we're going to view the movie together. The movie is Pariah. It's about a young um, queer teenager. Um, and it's written and directed by a black queer um, filmmaker. It's really great. Um, and so we're gonna show it here. We're gonna have like popcorn snacks. It'll be very cute, movie-like vibes. Um, and then we'll have a discussion afterwards. So we'd love to invite all select board members and if you wanna help spread the word about that. Um, we're also having um, a, we're starting a recovery meeting for people who identify as um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender here um, who are in recovery. So whether that's AA or um, you know, Narcotics Anonymous or um, other types of recovery programs and that's gonna kick off that weekend at the Arnold Block. Um, and then that'll be a recurring weekly meeting. So you could also tell people if you hear of anybody who's looking for support around sobriety, looking for a safe place with other people that might identify as LGBTQ to talk about addiction. Um, that's gonna be a really great meeting. It'll actually be the only um, recovery meeting that I know of that'll be in Bethel because the one at the Faith Assembly isn't happening anymore. Um, so, I just wanted to update you about Where that. Where did you say the location for the meeting is gonna be Owen on that? Um, the Arnold Block. Yeah. Yep. And what day is it? Um, so the Arnold Block is going to be Sunday, or sorry, Saturday at noon. That's the 25th. Um, Pariah, the screening of the movie, will be Sunday the 26th here at 2 p.m. Um, and I didn't mention it, but I will anyway. Friday, we're doing a 
Pride Prom, and that's gonna be geared more towards young people who identify as LGBTQ and their allies. It's gonna be at the White Church. Um, it's a free event, all ages, no alcohol will be happening there. Um, it's gonna be fun too. So. Is there gonna be any fee for the movie? No. Everything's free except for the drag and burlesque show at our bar, but that's already sold out, so. And then no is the recovery that. sobriety sport group gonna be every Saturday at noon or just that one day and then you guys will set a schedule? We're kicking it off every Saturday at noon. We're still figuring out where it's gonna be every Saturday at noon, but for a while it's gonna be a part of the block. Yeah. I can send you that too, so for the notes. Just to be clear for the minutes. All right, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank Thanks. you all. Th thank you. We're, uh, we're in um, public comment right now, so if there's anything anybody has that's not on the agenda, now's the time to bring it up. Not yet. Um, we're, we, uh, we got Chuck um, next. Um, actually, he was first, but they weren't here yet, so we went to public comment, and then, then we'll get to the water sewer piece of it. So uh, hearing none, I don't see anybody on. I get, there's a reflection there. I can't no, see. No, I don't see anyone um, either. Okay, so we'll close public comment, and we will move to Chuck and Central Vermont Quad Runners. Yeah, I'm Ken Carter, and this is Chuck Lyman. We're here on behalf of the... CVQR and Ray Blayton is helping us with some trail stuff. Uh, he's here with us. Um, we're here to ask permission to use the same roads that we've been using for the last several years to connect with our trails and to find out if there are any concerns, any issues we need to address. I, I think it, talking with um, Therese. I gave him the same map that you had last given week. I think nothing, the only nothing has changed on it. I, okay, perfect. I think the only uh, ongoing concern that we had, and we, I believe we first brought it up to the snowmobile club. Um, yeah, is yeah. that, and I can't remember whose property it is that comes. You know, if you come on Cooper Hollow, it's on the yeah. it's on the left. Yeah. Um, where there's, depending on the time, there there's stormwater that runs off yeah. that trail. I think that's Jack Calgary's. I think property. on to the road, and we've had some issues, especially um, during early winter with moisture coming off there and freezing on the road and getting icy, and you know trying to figure out a long-term solution being that's not the town's property on. There's we it out there about maybe potential of some water bars or something that we could install higher up that trail that could divert some of that water away from that point. Um, I don't know if we had any other concerns with any of the other trails or the roads pieces of it, but I think that's the one that keeps coming up. And, um, and I know it basically it's between your, your club and, yeah. and the snowmobilers that use it, so. Yeah. Um, um, there is a town road down below that that would eliminate that, but it wouldn't solve the problem if it, it isn't taken care of, but right. uh, we've never used that town road below there, but I mean, it is, it is, it is a town road that would, would not have that problem. Down on a corner, down, it goes. Get down into the, the gully there, the, the hollow part of it? Yeah, down you go down there. just below that driveway, and on the sharp corner, the town road actually goes to the left. Yeah. It connects onto that, but I don't know why they've always used that, but there used to be a, the old schoolhouse was there, and, and somebody used it as a camp or a summer home or something, and they probably didn't want people coming out through there, but um, that's just another option. But we didn't ride our trails the last two years in Bethel because we lost our trailhead. And so we weren't able to get up there, and we have no place to unload and, and to ride, so we didn't get up there to, to do anything with that. We're hoping to be able to get around and get our signs up this year so that at least the local people can ride. And, and uh, but I think we're going to maybe park at Ray's house one day in June and get our signs up, ride around the trails and get our signs up. And, and we can take a look at that at that time. How do you lose your trailhead? Just it's on somebody's private land. Oh. It was somebody was letting us use one of their fields, yeah. and they had other usage for it. So we ended up having to stop using it. So we had no place to park. 
Well, we don't want to give up our permissions because there's still local people that can ride from the house and, and sure. ride. So we don't want to give it up. We just, no. we're, we're trying to find another trailhead and work more on our trails. But. Okay. Good. Something I know that it's not quite there yet, but um, the Conservation Commission is working on the, I'm blanking on where it is, um, the town forest, Quimby town forest. And they're working on, yeah, yeah on Ridge. Um, they're working on a, a sort of parking area there. Could that be sort of tag teams? Where is it? So, the, yeah, you, you're probably going to do a better job. Either go um, Woodland or, or Ringe, and then you know where Quimby Forest is. Uh, up there, kind of at the end. And so, what the, the our trail takes in the Ringe Road. Yeah, because well, because that's it. The the conservation commission is uh, is trying to work on a forestry plan for dealing with the timber at Quimby, and at the same time, they want to build a parking area up there. So, do you know Farron Griffin, builder? So uh, I could send you his email, put yeah. you two in contact, and you could figure out where the I don't know how far down the road that is. I think um, they were looking to do it this fall, right? Yeah, they're not. It wouldn't be for this year, but. For future yeah. years, yeah. as a rule, the conservation group they do not like four wheelers. Yeah. They don't like to have them on their land. I'm not saying I don't know how they would feel about that, but as a rule, we don't have a rapport with them at all. Yeah, because I think the tr the trails were I mean, through the Vorek grant. Aren't those going to be? Well, I think be trails. Too? I think the trails would be open to to all to activities. All you know, I unless. I think it'd be worth. Chatting with yeah, yeah, seeing sure. if there's some mutual, yeah. you know, if you guys could work together and figure yeah, that sure. out. Sure. Yeah, I'll send you his email. Okay, probably send it. Do you have Ben's email? No, just, you can send it to Chuck. You can send it to me. Okay, what's, okay, I have Chuck's email. What's yeah. Ken's? You don't need to send anything to me because okay, I, I'll just send it my to fingers you. don't work very Okay, well I'll send it to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so That's why Farron. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do that. Send Farron Griffin's email to Chuck. All right, we'll do it. So I have a question. This is something way in the future. We are working on getting all of our landowner permissions legal in Bethel. Um, some land has changed hands, so we're working on that. That's why Ray's with us tonight, because he's going to be working on that. <clears throat> our sport is growing. And I'm sure you've all heard about the controversy in South Wales and about them wanting to open up trails there. Um, I ride different places other than here, and I ride out of state. I go to West Virginia uh, in February. And um, so the sport's growing. We want to grow. We don't want to grow real fast. We want to grow slowly. But one of the things that people always ask for is, can we get to a gas station or somewhere to eat? So with growing the Bethel trail system, would the board be opposed to opening up some other roads to get into town? Something to think about. I've thought about it a little bit, and we, our trailhead used to be on Sand Hill. So if we could come from there and come around down on the Church Street, down the bridge, through Main Street, down through the intersection and back onto um, Peabine. Peabine, one way, we're not crossing traffic. Just curious kind of what the board kind of thought about that idea. Um, it would mean a lot for the businesses in town. I know when I ride in West Virginia, everything is opened up down here. You can go just about anywhere and get food, gas, repairs, anything that you need. Um, just something that the board may want to think about. Uh, we may ask in the future. Could be two years from now, could be five years from now, could be ten years from now. But I think, you know, the board, feel free to jump in. Just kind of what I'm thinking is, I think probably what would work the best is, because um, things do take a while to um, have action on something like this, because it could become, you know, a public comment period to see if, you know, how um, the citizens want to act on it. Um, but it might be handy up front at, ahead of time is to make a proposal to the board of, you know. Yeah, so I think in, in the meantime, it would be, you know, what would be helpful to get the information out there sooner, right, is 
to make a proposal to the board of a, you know, kind of what you're thinking yeah. or how that would work. And that way it gives, you know, the board some time to think about your proposal as well as maybe what are our plan B or C if we don't really like that particular road that comes in or out. And then it also starts to open that conversation slowly to the public to start getting the information. Because I think in a lot of those, especially some of the areas that have recently expanded quickly, I think you get that kind of that shock and awe at, at, the, um, at the public level, you know, where I think if you kind of ease into it over time, I, I think it's easier to accept in, inside um, the area. Um, you know, just thinking at it, my way is maybe Church Street might not be, you know, coming down Church Street with sidewalks and all that may not be the best route in or out of town, but you know, maybe coming in, you know, on the back side of, um, you know, on the back side of Sand Hill down to the River Road, you know, P in that, Peavine in that way might be, you know, a little better suited, but you know, or there's a million other probably ways that we can get in and out. Down that way, we wouldn't be crossing the traffic. Yeah, the gas stations and the restaurants and it does. I mean, you come, you just just come right up here onto the you come in the back way of, of the yeah. town. From River Street, that's yeah. Right. Then you of, cross a little bit of state street. highway, but I don't know what their rules are. I know Alex but. Reister was talking about wanting the school to plow the parking lot down by the um, the softball fields and stuff to have more parking because I think they're looking for the same thing, which is how can they people access. You know, snowmobilers access downtown mm -hmm. Bethel or even possibly McCullough's. So, yeah. yeah so but, certainly. But I would say that you know the board and you know we're more than willing to hear proposals that you know have a potential of benefiting the downtown, right? And and bringing more business into the downtown area. One other thing probably would be good to do is maybe you know start drafting a proposal of the route that might come in and out, but also talk to the downtown businesses on. Here's our proposal, and what can you do for us? You know, and, and the only reason why I say that is, you know, currently there's some, not some. There's quite a bit of missed opportunities in the downtown, especially on Sundays. You know, and I'll say it again for the second board meeting in a row. You know, there's 200 plus kids playing soccer down here on this field, but there is no place to eat on Sunday. You know, there's no pizza place open to deliver pizzas. They could be making a killing right now. You know, but it kind of got to go both ways, right? Like you could build it, they come and nobody's here, right? So, you know, talk to maybe the gas station because obviously there's only one gas station. So the gas station and, and the food industry and, and anything else that may come, come along with that. Ken and I had talked um, um, earlier about if the tunnel was still open because they could park down below, walk up the bank, go through the tunnel underneath the tracks and access Main Street that way. And I believe that's all blocked off. It's it's a a part. Part. The tunnel will meet there, know. Therese. That's true. There's like a 15 <laughs> foot drop. You can see it where it's yeah. kind of blocked off. And then, yeah. 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 But there used to be stairs there, too. Yeah, years you know. ago. I know that um, that's one thing that Farron Griffin is looking into because there was some interest in revamping it, but we're not sure who owns it and um, whether it's owned by the railroad or, or we're not really sure yeah, who so the I know identity is that Farron was looking into doing a little going to talk to the um, historical society and then he could come in and take a peek at the land records but it's funny that you mentioned that because yeah was just talking about when I go to West Virginia I mean it's, it's all coal country down there yeah. and it's just kind of cool to go in and see some of these old places and they have stairs you've got to climb to get to a lot of the stuff so, yeah. so I'm sure people would you know wouldn't have a problem climbing those stairs to go up and Yes, have a I dinner have or a drink at the bar or yeah. whatever. And we have no idea what condition it's in, obviously. So, yeah. well, um, but again, that's something you bring up with Farron because he was the one kind of spearheading that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I again, I would, you know, kind of think about putting a proposal together and get it to the board, you know, ahead of time because it probably will take some time to, yeah. to get it all put together and uh, permissions and. Yeah, we, we still got a lot like of work that, to so. do on the trail system before we consider it, but sure. I wanted to just see what the board's input was before we... Yeah. Well, again, two years from now, the board could be different people, different That's right. thoughts right. and ideas, and you don't know. So. Right. But, um, but at least if you kind of started the process, you know. Yeah. Um, so 
So I guess at this point, just need a motion on to allow the uh, Central Vermont Quad Runners access to our our roads. Yep, the existing trails because they have a map, so it's um, nothing has changed. So it's per their existing map. So one of the things that I wanted to do, and I had hoped to have it done before tonight, I haven't yet, is put together a list of all of the roads with the sections of road that we use. Um, because of South Royalton's club starting up and them having such an issue, um, Barnard asked us to do it because the select board, one of the guys on the select board in South Royalton called Barnard and said, hey, do you have ATV trails in your town? And he went, uh, yep, but I can't tell you what they are. <laughs> and they have a map too. So what they made me do is go down and list all the roads and from whatever point to whatever point to point. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, just have I will get that put together <clears throat> okay. maybe after school's out. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And I'll get it by the office. That'd be great. Thank you, Chuck. It seems to me that they might want to have a conversation with Vorek and with uh, Bethel for All as we're thinking about signage and, you know, attractions, et cetera, in the community, that that's something that needs to be, should be included. And if we put a kiosk up that says this is what you can do in this town, uh, maybe, you know, having, so having a permanent trailhead, um, we have kiosks that we put up and we have uh, trail ethics that's on there, there'll be a map and all of that stuff. Um, we don't normally, we don't have a garbage can in our trailhead in Stockbridge. Um, but we don't have any problems with trash or anything up there. Uh, pretty good yeah, we've we've got some, you know, some things in the works right now to do some uh, major, uh, these are the hiking trails and these are the yeah, kind of things throughout the town. So this, it seems to me, could fit very well into that outdoor recreation planning that is already in process on uh, some of it's being funded and talked about right now. So uh, I would think that once um, so we, we don't have the grant agreement yet for the BORAC grant, once we do, we'll be hiring somebody to oversee it. So I'm sure, you know, they'll probably get in touch with you and Alex Reister and other people to um, talk about you know what the money can be used for and try to get everybody hooked into the same system so we'll make sure we get you connected to them once we get it's going to be a little while until we get all the grant agreement and stuff apparently the state's a little overwhelmed right now with the process right but i'm just saying that as as part of outdoor recreation this is something that right yeah i'm saying we'll put them in contact with people when we okay flush it out so you had a motion to authorize Central Vermont Quad Runners uh, to use the roads outlined on their map. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good season. Mm -hmm. Cecil's up too. Mm -hmm. we, just closed, uh, we just closed the public comment period a few minutes ago, Cecil. Did you have anything? Public comment that's not on the agenda. If, if it's about something on the agenda, we'll get to it. I'd like to make it. We talked about raising the cost of the cemetery lot. Yeah, sure. they approved, yeah. Okay. All well, they approved two weeks ago. Sorry, Cecil. I did it that week. You asked for it. Boom, just like that. <laughs> All done. Well, it's a, good, <laughs> it's a good thing I asked, or you've been sitting here for a while. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I see uh, Lenny, I see Lenny's oh, on. Um, Lenny. Did you have anything you wanted to add to public comment? Or are you good to go? You're on mute, by the way. Uh, you are aware of Pride, the Pride Fest and what's going on. And um, so that's pretty much it. I just wanted to express how I think this is important for the youth of this town. Um, for the people of this town and for businesses in this town. I've spoken to several businesses. They're excited about this and I'm hoping that it generates business for them and brings more people into the downtown area. That's part, That's one part of the mission of Pride Fest. The, the major part of the mission is 
to celebrate everybody um, and to make sure everybody realizes that they're included in this town and in the world, um, especially the younger generation. We have a lot of them going on. Um, I would like to encourage all of you to attend at least one, if not more than one of the events. There's a Pride Prom on Friday night. There is going to be a showing of a movie uh, dealing with um, the coming out of a youngster and their family. Um, and there's going to be a discussion afterwards, and that's going to be um, conducted by the EIC. So I think it's important that um, the select board be a part of this as well. The members get out and see what's going on and see the people and see how it turns out. And that's pretty much it. Hey, Lenny. Thank you. All right. Thanks. I think that closed public comment because there's no longer anybody around for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had everybody. All right, so uh, then we have the water sewer. Um, discussion in regards to the water rates so every year in May. June ish time frame we talk about um, the water and sewer rates for coming year so in the packet we had um, I don't know if Teresa wants to take us through it but with the <clears throat> last year's rates versus this year's rates um, one thing you know just I uh, was kind of going through and Teresa, I can comment after or I can go first go or um, so just kind of looking through uh, right now the proposed rates um, for water is about three dollars and sixty four cents more a quarter uh, per EU um, on when we're talking the water of course when we back up we just finished our um, first leg of the uh, water main updates of which if we went back and Paul I didn't have the exact number, but I'm sure you have it somewhere. But when we started talking about the water sewer, um, especially the water rates, um, and I could be wrong, but the when we first initially assessed the $2.8 million upgrade of, we'll call it phase one, we there was a proposal about once that went through, which it was um, authorized that we'd be looking at somewhere around thirteen dollars a quarter potential raise, yeah. uh, but that was before we started uh, either acquiring or hearing about some potential um, grants that we were that either we did get or ha didn't get, um, and um, and I I, I want to say that once we talked about that and through some of the the potential grants that either we were assured we were getting mm -hmm. or some that we thought maybe we would get yeah um that 13 or 12 whatever came down to like six or seven dollars a quarter if i remember right does that sound mm -hmm. yeah. somewhat in the ballpark and so you know these rates here are mostly going to be affected on starting to pay for that loan right um, bond payment is in so, august and this is the uh, this is the most current number we have from them we're waiting for the final um updated amortization and loan agreement because i have an email from patrick monks getting us to where we wanted to be there was some additional savings that they were able to carry forward and apply to our loan so um when i called the finance office they hadn't got the information yet but um through Patrick's email, I just ran the amortization schedule on that. So this would be the the estimated loan at this point. So what does that show on the spreadsheet? Is that the That's the DWSRF. DWSRF. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. the right. loan. So that's the no interest. Twenty eight thousand 20, or something. Twenty six thousand two hundred fifty. Yeah. No yeah. interest for you know forty year yeah. loan payment with all the yeah. So I yeah I had you know I I don't know if anybody else. I fielded two questions um, on some people in regards to the proposed water rate increase and why we were raising water rates. And I said, well, these are directly for the water project that we were approved for that we just finished. Um, and then to kind of going back through and quizzing um, Therese, you know, yeah. we started at, you know, 12 or $13 that got down to 6 or $7 that then final, well, 
at least right now, our best guess with everything that's coming in is $3.64. So yes, it is an increase, but it's also a very modest increase compared to where we had budgeted and approved the bond vote for. So um, just wanted to make sure people so understood the, that. The line item says meters. Yes, Is we that, had. That's metering at the station? No, that's, um, <clears throat> we have meters at the laundromat. We have meter at um, meters at the laundromat, Vermont Castings, Dandelion Acres, and. Is it no. No. And uh, so, sorry, Dandelion Acres. Laundromat. Ver laundromat, Vermont Castings, and. Um, and uh, G yeah, GW. So we realized during the, that there's, you know, we've talked about starting to meter larger businesses. Um, and, you know, so certainly I'm in favor of that. We've talked about metering the whole system eventually. You know, it's once you get the, you're just going to have to wrap it into a bond at some point. But um, we, during the water um, construction, Tim had found there was one building that, one business at least that's using some more water in their manufacturing so we, we'd want to put a meter on there so and I think there's two lines so I think it's this could be that could be just enough to just meter one building but it could be you know a revenue source that we're missing so the tank inspection that's a new, a new item well, we have to do it every do so it. many years, and yes, yeah, so yes, and so we just hadn't really, I think he'd kind of, if he had tucked it into like maintenance or something, I just wanted to start calling it out because it's a requirement of our permit. Right. So I did reduce, um, well, I think know, in the past, it, repairs, um, yeah. and another lot, and uh, something else to try to cover that. So, um, to reduce that, I did have to increase building maintenance or not, yes, well at the water department just because we have a couple of doors and stuff that Richard's going to need dealt with. Other than that, I mean, a lot of it is pretty similar. Um, you know, there's not really a big increase in the budget itself. And then we had the sewer rate schedule, which uh, appears to be $3.28 increase per quarter. Yeah, so there's some savings there, obviously, in, in labor, social security, um, you know, retirement. Um, but, so there, there obviously is some savings. There, um, we have some, you know, equipment that's getting older, so we did increase equipment maintenance by a few thousand dollars. Um, Tim had reviewed the budget, you know, in January when we did the original draft for, um, when we did the original draft for town report. So a lot of that, you know, was pretty similar. Some of the supplies, uh, lab supplies have just gone up in price. Um, it looked like two of the biggest movers that I saw was um, the reserve fund, which yep. um, I think was identified as not not appropriate enough revenue for future projects. Exactly. Um, and then the reimbursement to the general fund, which was same thing, projects basically. that had been done in the past that weren't getting paid back we fast were enough. Funding, yeah. So I, I think those were the t two biggest movers in the budget. So if you look, the actual, the budget is actually down by, you know, if you look, the proposed budget itself is a decrease in the budget. But what happens is I kind of included the math that, you know, Tim had, and I used to do this together. and. To kind of let you know, it's if it's all it's all based on EUs. So every time you know a building maybe was a four apartments and now it's one apartment, you lose three EUs. So that kind of changes. And as you have buildings that aren't aren't developed, so they're not at full capacity, or you give someone a vacancy rate, or you give someone a break while they, you know, do something, it it affects the EU. So that's really what drives it, since you don't have meters. So how much of an impact does a reserve fund number have on the on the increase? Uh, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's, it's, not, it's a relatively small impact, I would think. Yeah, I, I didn't do the math. I mean, we could, do, you know, you know you're doing another, you know you're not doing, so we're going to do the sewer pumps, we're going to do the generator. Those are two big things that take care of it. We know we need some more tree work done, which we had budgeted for. That was expensive. I think that um, the sewer, one of the buildings may 
need a new roof here in the next couple of years. And um, currently there is no, you know, no reserve fund. And we know that we are trying to get um, into this next bond, the 1.4, 1 1.6 million, I, I can't remember, call them. We're trying to get some more of the work done on the tanks and also including an expansion of Oh, well, that's more for water. But anyways, that's right, for more for water. But for sewer anyways, I know he's looking at more tree removal, or not he, Richard now, um, along the bank, and that there's a roof, so there's no money you know, set aside for that. But certainly it's, you know, it's something that you could reduce. Um, so it looks like if you do the quick math on it, that if, let's just say, you, you didn't have the reserve fund, which there's always seems to be money in that reserve fund, but the um, in the past you just the for it, but addition money. so let's say extra twenty five thousand dollars in that fund mm -hmm. is about um, it's just over th um, three quarters of a percent so the total budget's going up one point six eight of which say three quarters of that is the is the increase in the reserve fund appropriation. Well, I'm, just, I'm asking the questions that I no just asked. so yeah just, no yeah, fine. just to no, get it, it makes out sense. on the floor I, so it I, looks like that's Pro that's probably about half the in increase is that appropriation for I think future. The, the good uh, thing too to think about is like we're seeing now is without American Rescue Plan money, we'd be sunk because we'd be looking at replacing those mm. pumps to the tune of 120,000 plus this generator as there is no reserve. Right. So um, I think that's one thing that you know people need to understand is the age of the sewer plant and so putting money aside for future projects is not a bad thing. So all together it comes to about seven dollars a quarter ballpark. Your rate is what I came up um, with. well it's going from one eighty six twenty one to one eighty nine thirty nine. Right. For six, sewer. Six ninety two combined. So, yeah. 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 Seven months. Okay. Question. What's rent water rental? Rental. Oh, it, just, it should be just water fees. I, 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 I just, just have to give back. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, is it water you it. pay for and then yeah. then give it back with the just sewage? Should what? Be <laughs> fees, yeah. I don't, I don't know or revenue or something maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we haven't gotten to that point yet, but you know, <laughs> there are some communities that have to do that. Unfortunately. That's right. You get in the cities, I mean, it's yeah. pretty and much And the, the other thing, too, is, you know, like the auditing over. service, the water, the, serve, the water department's audited and all that. It just gets paid for right. through the general fund, the audit. You know, we don't divvy it up amongst these guys, amongst different people, so. And the, um, obviously, the sewer um, salaries and a little bit of water obviously represent, um, you know, Richard um, is the new chief operator, and then of course our uh, Clayton Whitmarsh, who does do water and sewer every other weekend. Plus, he covers um, Richard's vacation. So, and he's a level five wastewater, which is nice. So, since he has obviously 25 years, and um, you know, we needed someone with more experience, not less. And then the other thing worth noting is the vacancy rate. Depending on which day of the week you checked it, was you know somewhere in the seventy-seven percent yeah. area. Seventy-six, so, seventy-eight. Yeah. So, so at this point, we just had increased it to the eighty percent as a solid number to look at yeah. um, for any type of potential um, vacancy rate. Yeah. Um, type but pieces. we don't normally give you all the math, but I thought you might like <clears throat> to see what we do, what goes into it. So. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, you know, kind of looking at overall, I think, you know, to get to the approved $13 a quarter water down to, let's hope it stays there at 364 right now after that bond vote is pretty. For 2.8 million. Yeah, it's pretty water. good. Um, I mean, I guess the, you know, the sewer rate schedule's starting to go the other direction, um, which, you know, it's just basically the same thing that we're in the water hole on, right? It's just mm -hmm. so long that we've allowed things to get outdated to the point where they're becoming very costly. And, and um, so we are taking steps to increase that reserve fund? Yes, yep, it's in the budget. Yeah. For the future, it's just got to... 
Well, yeah, if you look at it, and I don't know what it had been historically, but I mean, when you're talking anywhere four to six thousand dollars a yeah. year that we've been putting in there. And if you don't make you know, the money that year, if you take a loss, then you don't fund your reserve. Right. So. Um, but I think it also just kind of goes to show um, the need to appropriate some of that money towards some of the sewer plant uh, because we, you know, if not, we would have to adjust the rates even higher to and account for that. Depend on something like ARPA. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The other thing right. we had. Oh, talked, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing we had talked about too was the discussion about the next water bond the next phase, the 1.6, 1.4, 1.6 million is the possibility of, you know, putting that onto the full taxpayers instead of the users because there's limited users and eventually, you know, you just can't drive the rates too high for, for the users. I mean, it's my theory is they pay for gravel roads and, you know, we pay for downtown stuff and I mean, it all kind of works out. It's still one town, one community. So that is something that we had discussed and we already know we have $600,000 to offset some of that bond and then of course mm -hmm. we're waiting to see what the you know, program's gonna be for funding. So, and we're almost at full design on that as well. And that's projected for a year? Well, I'm not, so I think we may. We're not that far yet. Well, we're pretty far into design. It really depends on the state how it goes through the approval process, so it could be something that gets bid out this winter um, and then goes into, you know, next construction season, but I don't know yet. I know right now um, there's still just several steps to get through through the state level, so. So I guess one question I would have is, so being that we increased the reserve fund um, from, let's say, four or $6,000 to the 30 on yeah. the sewer, yeah. um, but currently we are carrying, you know, 7,000 on the water. And I understand that a bulk of the water projects that are coming are coming by bond yeah. vote because, mm -hmm. of, you know, we've waited so long. Yep. But is that, is that 7,000 either worth well, even putting in there because we're going to bond vote anyways, well, or is it not enough money to fund the I system think over 40 years, you know um, what I mean? I think it's a start because next year you have a loan payment that's, we're gonna pay off one of the loans in water, because that's the other thing, is in the sewer ordinance, the sewer ordinance specifically states that the general fund needs to pay for the debt of the sewer. It doesn't say that in water. So water currently has three loan payments that, you know, and sewer doesn't have that problem. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking as we leave the reserve fund now and then when we get we pay off that next bond loan you could put that automatically to level it out you could just shove it right into the reserve fund so then you don't really have to fluctuate too mm. much okay but uh, yeah it's an interesting i don't know why the water ordinance didn't get written the same way but that's the way the sewer ordinance got written okay all right any other questions in regards to the Water sewer rates. Do you have any questions, Mr. Barry? <laughs> uh, no, I just thought that since we're raising rates, which is which is fine because everything's going up, we have to go up. But I, I would like to open a discussion. Uh, some of us landlords have all gotten together and we kind of feel like we're being unfairly charged for our rate, not the uh, dollar amount but the usage rate of the way that you're calculating usage for our buildings. For example, a five bedroom house in Bethel with a half acre garden, a couple cars to wash and a laundry room are charged the exact same rate of a small two bedroom with no garden, no cars to wash and no laundry room. Where in those two bedrooms house two people normally, sometimes it's two and a half people, uh, currently, there's two and a half people in one of my two bedrooms. Um, and we're being charged the exact same amount. And as, as prices have increased across the board on everything, we got to start tightening our belts and looking at things. And so we're going to be coming together with a proposal to say what we feel would be fair for our, our units. Uh, another example is that we have, I have two SROs, which are single room occupancies, 225 square feet. One of them is 300 square feet. 
a two-car garage oh, is 400 square feet. This is about a, about a one-car garage. It houses one person in the 18 years that I've had it. Twice there has been two people in it in, in one of the units. So normally it's a one-person occupancy. And I'm charged 0.75% of a five or 10 bedroom house, right? And obviously my water usage is gonna be much less. So we need to take a look at that as we try to provide affordable housing in Bethel. Uh, we, we, do, we are happy to pay for our water usage, but we'd like to pay for what we use and not, uh, it, it's just unfair. It's just unfair that a family of five or ten, you know, if you have five bedrooms, the state looks at it as ten people in the house, and they're being charged the same rate as two people in a two-bedroom, or I'm paying 0.75% for one person in 225 square feet. So we need to make some adjustments on that. So late, so far, Bethel has just fallen behind on what the state guidelines are, but they're not a statute, they're not a law, it's not legislated. We can choose whatever, the select board can choose whatever they would like or whatever they deem fair to charge for, for our usage. We could also put in water meters, which is in the past we have discussed uh, with different people that were on the board at the time, which is fine, but we need to be charged at the rate that we actually use the water and not for any comparison to a five bedroom house or a four bedroom house with so many more people in it. So we, we just want a fair, we will, we're happy to pay for what we use, but we'd like it to be fair. And over the last couple of years, as the rates have increased so drastically, it's really put it, uh, it's really, it's really hurt uh, the, the, uh, the income on our buildings. Um, for example, I now pay $8,000 for the Levere block and I pay $6,200 in taxes. So my sewer and water usage is much higher than my taxes and I'm using much less water than the equivalent number of people. Right. No, and, and, and you know, as long as I've been on the board, we've, we have recognized that there is a, uh, an unfairness when it comes to the water usage from like examples that you just had from, you know, a one, one occupancy to a five, right? Um, so there's definitely, definitely, I think we've all agreed that that, that is happening um, under our EU system. Um, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to manage the cost of the system um, so that we don't shock everybody with the rate increases. And the only reason why I say that is we have explored about, and this is where it gets, the water gets muddy a little bit, but it's, we've explored the cost of putting water meters on our current system. And the information that we have collected up front on it is we would be more equitable with water usage, but instantly everybody's rates are going up if you use a little bit or if you use a lot of it. Right. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And, and hold on. And then the other piece that we're trying to get through here as well is we have a system that is severely outdated. Okay, so we're trying to, you know, had this system been managed well over the last 40 years, we would have been slowly putting money into maintaining the system rather than all of a sudden let's say very little water um, maintenance or water increases for many decades and now we're having to raise rates because we have to come up with money to fix the system that's falling apart. So we're, we're trying to manage both of those pieces. I, I totally understand that and I'm totally on board with that. Uh, it's unfortunate, I mean like all these towns in Vermont, they're old towns, old infrastructure, we have to pay to get them fixed sure. up. Have no problem with that. What is unfair is the way that we are being charged for less usage than other people. So what you're saying is, how are we gonna raise the money? Well, instead of trying to get it all from us downtown that have multiple use buildings, 
add a little bit to the other people that are actually using more water so that you keep your, you're keeping your funding the same. And I totally understand, I get the concept that we have a closed system. We have a limited number of people on the system. We don't have any developers building big tracks. We can't add people to the system and we have set costs. I get that. And that's what you're saying right there. I get it. Happy to pay our share. We just don't feel like we're paying our, we're paying way more than our fair share now. Um, when we're getting charged for a small two bedroom that has two and a half people, the same rate, the same a dollar amount, because you're assuming that we're using the same EUs as people that have five or 10 people in their house, in their homes. I wonder since we're just, we're not at complete full design yet, and obviously the state's gonna be getting additional funding, like ARPA money and this and that, I wonder, I had been talking to Tim about metering all the businesses, at least start with like businesses and apartments so we could get a fair, you know, read and obviously we'd have to figure out a rate for them and then eventually do users because it's hard when you do like a 40 year bond. A lot of the meters are gotten better now because they don't clog up so there's not as many parts and so they may be good for 20 years, but um, maybe an opportunity to reach out to um, the state and Wayne Elliott and see, hey, is there, we have only a few meters in town, is it, how much would it be to at least meter all the businesses, and not just downtown businesses, but like people of apartments or other businesses, Bethel Mills and um, other, you know, people we know that have um, Airbnbs or multiple rentals, and maybe we start by metering that and then kind of, otherwise I see what you're saying. You're basically saying we could charge residents like a 1.25 or a 1.5 EU. We would just have to figure out like a census of how many people are in each house or something. But I get what you're saying. It's, yeah, I mean, and the, yeah. The, the problem with the meters is we don't, if we did a meter on the LeBeer block or on the Arna block or on the different multiple, or Dave's building here, um, we, we would need a reference point on what the other people that are in homes with five bedrooms or 10 people or more people. Uh, so we need, we, and I think it's, I think if the easiest thing with no money up front, with no money up front costs of putting in meters or added labor costs for reading meters and that sort of thing is to just look at, at, at a square foot cost or a, uh, uh, an occupancy cost or a, um, a bedroom cost. So when we de design a part, when we design septic systems, the state looks at one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, and they assume that there'll be two people in each bedroom. And you can, you can, you can control your cost of the infrastructure of your septic system if you only have a two family, a two person family, you put in a one bedroom septic system and you can control that cost a little bit. So there's already a formula set up in the thinking of usage uh, historically in the state of Vermont. So it, it's not tough to say, you know, like, okay, not looking at, not even looking at occupancy, if we said bedrooms, this house has three bedrooms, we can kind of assume it's six people. Right, because what we have, because we currently use that, you know, wastewater slash potable water, you know, formula as part of the water rule to go through, and it's not the, uh, to calculate EUs. And so, you know, that's a, an interesting thought, is what you're saying, is doing it on, the, the on part that we Because you're right, it takes advantage of, I mean, there's still people that are going to squawk when they have a three-bedroom home and only one person lives there, but... But, but the, uh, the dwelling could have the capacity for six people. Right. So, um, well, you so you have you to can't assume that. Hmm? You can't assume that that has the capacity for six people. You don't know the conditions of right. that particular. No. Well, it's like my house, for you know, example, you would say. But, but it, you gotta come up with a number of some, yeah. somewhere. Somewhere you, know, you, gotta, you gotta find some. Yeah, you gotta find yeah. some kind of base. But I mean, I think we've all agreed that water meters or metering water usage is probably the most fair system. However, I just want to get that out there again. 80% of the system is fixed cost, okay? 
20% of the system is variable cost. Variable cost is the water. Fixed cost is everything up until you turn your faucet on. So if you go, and we've already gone down this exercise, if you go put meters on every single place tonight, okay, I'm just gonna make this up. If Therese uses 10 gallons a day and I use 20 gallons a day, her rate's going up, my rate's going up, right? You're not gonna, you're gonna use the same amount of water, everybody's rates are going up. That, that, because we did this uh, three years ago and we had a number somewhere in the half a million dollar range to put meter. This was just installing meters. This is not counting who reads the meter, who does all the maintenance to the meters and all this. Half a million dollars would instantly go on the fixed system. So how you pay for the fixed system is everybody's rates go up. But they would go up at so that there are people so, that are yeah. using So you would win your argument that maybe this person pays a little bit more, but everybody's rates are going up. And what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to get work done in the system, raise rates modestly as we go, but not shock the system. Is looking at bedrooms and using the equation that the state of Vermont already uses, which is the sewer system, and using bedrooms as your model, that's a no cost system. How, how is that fair? I'll, I'll give you an example. If you look at my house, you would say it's three bedrooms and you have three occupants. But only two, only one of those occupants lives there full time. The other two occupants live there half time. So why would it be fair for me to pay three bedroom people when there's only one and a half? You know, I mean, we could go on and on all day with all the different scenarios. Exceptions would be this thing. Oh, I know. And because I just had, uh, I just had a conversation with a sewer designer, and it doesn't matter. You you paid to have, a, or you didn't, but whoever built that house paid to have a three-bedroom septic system put in, Sorry. even if only one person lived there. Sorry. So, the state's system is consistent, maybe not always equitable, but it's consistent. If you have five bedrooms, you pay for five bedrooms worth of water. You choose to have five bedrooms. You choose to have one bedroom. But there's Consistency. Water. But we also got to think of some of the exceptions we have in our current system, right? We allow, which we could change if we went this way, is we allow for let's say, because we're talking about a resident that has a potential of five bedrooms, right? But what about a business that has a potential of five apartments that's only one apartment? You know, like, how can you, how can you say that my house has a potential of three, not being used three, but then tell a business that, you know, well, I know yours has a potential of five, but you're remodeling, you know, you're only using two, so we're gonna charge you two, right? You'd have to choose, they would have to be on five too. You know what I mean? Like, that's right. I mean, where we do have exceptions to the rule right now, where we do allow a business that may only have, you know, uh, a capacity of five that's running on one. I think or apartment two buildings or, is where you might do that uh, exception. But if a business has, like GW Plastics, okay, Mulatto, they have, I don't know how many. Seven bathrooms? No, 14 bathrooms? That makes a difference rather than two but bathrooms. They're meters. They are they're meters. meters. But they pay per, per person e, per yeah. shift. 15, they pay 15 gallons per day per person per shift for their people. And then they water, for, water manufacturing. for manufacturing is metered. So, yeah. but, it, so I, I mean, Kevin's point is not it's not wrong. I mean, I, I can understand what he's saying about assessing, about assessing, you know, someone when there's, he, you know, when you know there's a house of five and you know there's five people in there and they're getting one EU. I mean, when you guys got sued, what did the, the judge said? It wasn't it, perfect, well, but it, it was, was fair. It was fair. I mean, that was the I settlement. I wasn't here when you got sued. Yeah. Us, but, um, but he has a, so, I mean, so I think that he has a good point about that. And it's hard to figure out how many people live in each house, um, but. Yeah. But I mean, we, we the definitely argument, have. The argument is valid. We definitely have talked about, you know, the, that option. It's this. In, in my case, uh, and 
in, in some of the other landlords that have small, small living spaces that are for rent. Um, it's the extreme, like my SROs. They are so small, and they're paying 75% of what a large house with a large garden with car washing and laundry going on. And that's just so blatantly unfair when that if you were to look at the usage that one person uses versus this house, it would probably be closer to 25 or 30 percent of, of that house. And so it's just gotten way out of whack. And as the prices have gone up and we, you know, like we're all good solid citizens and we've always just paid, we pay our bills on time and we're providing, you know, both Dave and I, um, you know, we don't get any social service funding. We keep our rents low because we try to find housing for working Vermonters. And, um, and it's tough when these rates are going up so high and they're unfair. We, it, finally, it's time to kind of do a little, a little lobbying to say, okay, look, this is unfair. We can't keep doing this. We can't afford it. Our tenants can't afford it. And, and it's just blatantly unfair. So happy, I, and let me state that I've said this before, we're happy to pay our fair share. We're happy to pay it. We just want to pay for what we're using. And Chris, I understand it's a closed system. If our, if our, if it, if it costs us $5 million a year, we have to produce $5 million, but it should be produced fairly from the people that are using the system. And your argument, Chris, geez, keeps coming back to, we have to produce X amount of money. Yes, let's do it fairly. No, that's not, that's not my argument, Mike. But we can go down that road another time, I guess, because it doesn't seem like, you know, we'll just agree not to Is agree. Woodstock so. metered, do you know? Certain, certain places in Woodstock are metered. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. I wonder, I know, like, I think, I almost think, like, Certain places, fire districts, sometimes they do like a, a flat rate per year. It'd be interesting to look for similar systems, similar size to see how every, if they're unmetered to see what, um, how and, and we did the it. exercise four or five years ago where we, you know, we, we didn't get into all the nitty gritty of the whole thing. We started off with let's, let's do our due diligence and just see what the upfront cost is, right? And the upfront cost was enough. Of course, we had a lot of other stuff going on. We had to plan for the you know, water line upgrades that we hadn't even started talking about. And, um, and it just, I remember looking at the figure saying, you know, we're going to have to do water line project number one, water line project number two, and some of these other, we'll call them minor upgrades that aren't minor. You know, they're hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, and we just couldn't justify paying for the hardware for the metering upfront and all this other cost coming because because we are shocking the user we, we have to like there, there's no other way um to pay for the system um so well i'm, I'm not necessarily lobbying for meters and because that's all that is a big cost and it's an added cost to the system but we can be more fair without adding without adding upfront costs by just being logical and looking at the situations. I mean, a 225, a 225 square foot home is gonna use a much, much less than a five bedroom house or a three bedroom house or a house with a family of two or four in it. Yeah. We'll definitely, I mean. To someone and see if, see if we can find some similar system similar size and see if they're not metering what other rates are they doing and and uh how's you know i'll talk to someone at the state too that that and see what we can come up with it's always yeah i mean we'll continue to do our due diligence well, on, see what else on is all this because just... i mean i think you make a valid point about the you know one house with a five bedroom and apartment so Let's see what we can find out and um, 
figure out how everybody else is doing it that's not metered. I mean, there's, got, there's obviously other systems, and there's got to be somebody, there's got to be multiple towns of similar size that oh, are unmetered. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we'll, I'll do some research and try to get some more information together. And we'll put together, we'll put together some things that we, that we have come up with and we'll yeah. send you an email that kind of explain things and kind of show what we feel the percentages should be. That's, that would be helpful, yeah. And then I'll see what I get from the state and try to get some information together and then share it with you and, and Dave. And Chris, you're right. Somebody else is going to have to make up that difference. If I'm paying 30%, of what I'm now paying 75% for, somebody else has to make up that because we need that for our budget to make the system work. So it will be dispersed amongst the other people that are the normal homeowners that have normal houses. And, and it would just be a smaller increase for them, um, but it would be fair. And they sometimes come in and are very upset because we'll have like a elderly lady on a fixed income who lives in, maybe she has a two bedroom house, but only has herself. And then she's mad because she's paying a full EU. And, you know, so, uh, you know, yeah, it, so we get it from all sides, but yeah, certainly absolutely. let's look at what yeah. there's out there. Yeah, the, the other side of the unfairness of a 100% metered is, and I'm going to use electricity as an example. It costs as much to run a 220 line into my house as it does to run a 220 line into some any other house. That's a really great point. And and so it, if it, so even if I am a small user of electricity, I still have to pay for that infrastructure. Uh, and, and so just doing it only on the volume of material consumed Absolutely. is there's, there's, a, there's a downside to that well, as well in terms of, I there's probably no perfect solution. Uh, well, I think that what you're saying is that a single resident should pay more than a multiple use building that has higher density, that has one sewer line coming in, it would have one meter, and we would be servicing eight units. So that should be cheaper. We shouldn't be charged the same rate. We don't have eight we don't have eight sewer lines leaving the building, and we don't have eight fresh water lines coming into the building. So we're actually saving the town tons of money. So that's if, if well, that that's, it doesn't work. Yeah, if, if you have 10 connections or one connection, yeah, there's some sort of nominal amount of money to initially put the connections in there. But what we're talking about is the system, the main system, no, I understand. I to the treatment that. plant, that is where 80% of your cost comes from. Now, connections to that system, connections to those system, so is, is the responsibility of the private citizen. No, I understand that. What he was talking about was the infrastructure of that particular house. Yes, it brings in 220 power. Um, and if you, in every, it doesn't matter the size of the house, you have to have a service panel. It has to have, a, you know, you bring in your main power. And, and, and that's, you are right in that every house has to have it. And that's a part of the cost of, of hooking on to power. And it's hooking on to one. for apartments. You know, that's separate metering for each apartment. We do, but we only have one service that comes in. We have one primary so, service that comes into the whole building. So, um, so we'll, we'll take that under advisement and we'll, you know, we continue to look at all different aspects of how we make our system better. Um, but, we, you know, it's hard for us to do everything overnight in this, oh, okay, with totally what we have. So we're trying to, again, it's, we definitely that. see where you're getting, but we're just trying to get to that point overnight is difficult. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. way of looking at it, though. I don't think we've looked at before. No, I think but it, always it becomes challenging now because oh, well, then, any, any solution is going to be Because then you have to, in that, in that form of system, you'd have to interview every single user to say, I know you have a five bedroom house, but oh, you only have two people. Okay, well, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
Yeah. Ha like, how would you do that? Like, you would have to interview every single person. And then... Well, we'll just have to look at different options. There's other options out there. Let's see what's out there. Because you've always used the same model. Yeah. You've always used the wastewater rule, not the water rule. So let's look and see what else is out there. I've seen the numbers before. And trust me, everybody's water is going up. And then you're going to have to reduce the amount of water that you're using. Yeah. And you're still going to pay more money. That, that's the end result. I mean, I, we've done this math before. But we can, and we'll, we'll look at it. Just, right. um, just any to further? throw out another little, I have to say. Yeah. What about the guy who has a two-bedroom house? He's very wealthy. He's got 17 cars. He washes every single one of them every day. He's going to use a lot more water than the guy that has a five-bedroom house. And it was a lot less money. Well, I, yeah, I mean, everybody. And the only way to pick that up is meter. That's what Randolph does. Randolph meters the water. I do. And the uh, sewer is charged by what goes on the water meter. Exactly. Because the sewer has to handle all that water. Mm -hmm. That's right. So the guy who washes his cars and waters his lawn and yeah, so on and so forth cool. pays a hell of a sewer bill. And we came, I came from a meter. Unless so you don't have a sewer. Well, if you're in town, you have sewer. Yeah, but we came, not all of yeah. us. I came from a metered system, and you got the base rate gave you yeah, 100 it's... gallons per day, as was calculated in the base rate. And if you went over your 100 gallons per day within that quarter, then it kicked you to another rate. So if you were filling a pool, or you had a flowing like a broken toilet that was running, or then yeah, then your your bill went up, and and um, you're right. And you're, if you had sewer, uh, your sewer bill went up because yeah, what's coming in's got to go out. So, um, so. Just a little glitch to think about. Huh. Yeah, I I mean, there's a big difference. I mean, you can group single family residents. You can kind of group all of them in. I mean, they're all kind of relate. They're all related. They're from the exact same family. Right? That some are big, some are small, some have tons of people in a small space, some have a few people in a large space, some have a lot of people in a large space. But they're all single family residents. And then what we're talking about is multiple family residents, like the LeVere block and the Arna block and, the, and, and Dave's building here. And those are a, a, different, a different grouping. And so I think that it's too difficult, it'd just be too awkward to go, how many bedrooms do you have and how many people are living in your house and how many times are you getting up in the night to go to the bathroom and, you know, all those different questions like that. And, and people just kind of assume with their single family, you know, like they don't bicker quite as much with, with, with their sewer and water rates or what they're being charged. Um, and it's, a, it's just a different ballgame when we're talking about multiple use buildings or high density buildings. Okay. And, and it doesn't foster, you know, I mean, I had this discussion um, uh, years ago. It's like we put in low flow toilets and flow, low flow uh, shower heads, and nobody else. Are, are motivated to do that. We do it just because we, you know, it's, I don't know, I feel like it's the right thing to do, even though Vermont is not hurting for water. But, um, but should somebody who is trying to conserve water and put in and invest in upgrades um, and pay the exact same amount? So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else further on water, sewer? When, when um, Therese, do we have to? These to go in effect July 1st. But do you need a motion from us this yep. evening or? Yes. Yep, because the, the, the amount, this uh, list, this right here is going out in the water bills that are gonna be issued. We like to put it out in the, with the water bills that are being issued in May, so that way people have a heads up, they get that, they get a copy of the link for the CCR, which is your consumer confidence report, information about please don't flush the following things into the sewer system. So um, you always approve the water rates this, the second meeting in May. And I mean, if you're gonna always? make, 
know, since I've been here, five years. Are you sure? Yep. You put your stamp on that? Pretty sure. Always? Uh, so I'll wait, at least as long as I know. But the, <laughs> as long as I've been here, you have. And, um, you know, if you were to make some sort of change in the EU rates, it's going to take time to figure that out anyways mm -hmm. um, and figure out fairness. You'd still need to raise the same amount of money. So even if you were going to do some EU change during the year, um, you know, I would suggest that you have a public hearing about it, but, um, and then, you know, let people know, but it's almost like what they're looking for is a residential rate versus a commercial rate. So, but like you said, it's hard. I mean, we just go by the <clears throat> portable water, you know, there's a whole water rule this thick and we just use a certain section of it and that's how we, that's what you've been basing it on, so. Rule to approve the rates as presented. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And, and we have the Two Rivers Transportation Advisory Committee representation appointment. Um, so it looks like Bill Hull is willing to fulfill that seat for us for one more year. Yep. So I was just. We have a Need a motion on that? We got a motion on the table. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then uh, just kind of our continued discussion in regards to the American Rescue Plan Act money. Um, Therese was uh, nice enough to put together a handout for us that kind of shows, you know, to date what we've, some of the conversation points that have been included in that um that you know was still ongoing i will say number 11 um what was newly added the amphitheater style seating in front of the library i did redirect them to the library and let them know that was library property not town property and that the library already was working on a project to make themselves more ada accessible and increase seating so i did um told her i'd add it to the list but also steered her back to the to the library um so one of the things we have been talking about for since the minute we heard about American Rescue Plan money is upgrading the sewer pumps that are beyond their useful life. And, you know, which would be a same thing with the generator on Lower Church Street. You know, this is, you know, we're looking to add, you know, another 20, 30 years um, and something that's not going to be added to the rates, won't be added to the tax rate, won't be added to the water rate, won't be added to the sewer rate. So current last time um, we, I spoke with the gentleman who was doing the, he received one estimate on the sewer pumps and one estimate on the generator. I am not issuing any of those um, because I have to put out an RFP because we did find out that because it's federal money, we have to go through the process, which is fine. No problem with that. Um, so what I would like to do is, um, when I come back from vacation, so the beginning of June, is craft the RFP for the sewer pumps and for the generator and get it out because some cases we're looking at a six month lead time. And we know that the sewer pumps are now being rebuilt like every 18 months. Um, so this is just not an ideal situation for us. So um, obviously the key stone of the money was to be spent on infrastructure. It's also gonna help downtown you know, businesses. It'll help, especially because the sewer has the capacity to expand. The sewer plant can get larger. So that's so kind Chris of- could join, could join the fund? He could. So if someone, on out. so if North. we had a business out you know, there, we do have more space and sewer. So it will have, I believe it would, could add to the economic development. Do you, Certainly do you have time. specific pump that you wanna change, change out? Yep, we had them all spec'd by our engineer already. Yeah, but I mean, specific locations, because... The ones in the, the actual plant. Oh, in the plant. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry, I should have said that. Yes, the ones, well, you the, know the system better. All the well pumps got changed out in <clears throat> Irene. Right, no, nope, I'm talking about the plant ones. So they were in when the building was originally built. Yeah. And yeah. the, so that's when so those are the ones we're looking at replacing and upgrading so obviously technology has come a long way in 30 years and um, you know these are going to be 100 you know probably 20 125,000 dollars but it's be something that won't go on to the rates and 
Mm -hmm. So anyways, I just want to move forward with the RFP so I can get this, we can get the best pricing we can get and then move forward with spending some of the American Rescue Plan money and then make a decision on how to spend the rest, you know, by September. Are you going to get a spec sheet on the phone? I have one. Yep. Does it have any new way on orders? I couldn't tell you right now. You'd have There's to read it. There's a lot of work that's being done with electric motors that are possible. Yeah. So we had we had our um, the engineer come in and, and actually he and he recommended a guy and then that guy came in and then the new guy we have Clayton Whitmarsh he said that's what they run in in um, Harland or Hartford. Hartford I always want to call her Hartford those as well so um, so we'll spec out for those and then see where the pricing comes in but especially for six months out we really need to. Get so just to make sure, so you're looking for permission right now to just go out with the RFP. Yeah, I want to go out with the RFP. Doesn't mean that, you know, we would still have a decision once the prices come in if we want to move forward with those prices or not, correct? Right, right. I mean, I think that so, you need to... Yeah, I mean, so yeah. I would, I, mean, I wouldn't I have any issue with going, you know, getting prices right. and, I think that and, you and need then seeing to... how that, that fits into our... Right, I mean, I think that sewer water had here. been our had been a priority because originally when it came out it was water I'm sorry I guess yeah water sewers well, well I guess water, I put right? it to you this way is we Existing. either are going to borrow the money or we're going to use American Rescue Plan money so mm -hmm. either way they're much needed upgrades and mm -hmm. um so I think that um yeah because when it came out it was either water sewer broadband Ex uh new right new and yeah. then they said we're like we don't need new we need to fix what we have right. and then you know they came out so and obviously we still have other things that we want to do with money I mean, there's 583,000 so it's not like this is going to take it all because it's not um well, is the is the generator on the more church street operating currently yes so, but again, it's such a lead time now with everything. So, all right, so I will move forward with the RFP and uh, we'll get some pricing. And that was all I had on ARPA money. Right. Do you have anything left on your town manager's report? <clears throat> um, so we did, oh, so more good news on the grant writing front. We were awarded $20,000 from Better Roads program used for culver upsizing, berm removal, stone lining, ditches, et cetera, on a portion of Wright Road near the river. Um, so there is a town match, of course, but still that's another 20. We also awarded uh, a paving grant for Christian Hill. Thank you very much, Chris Jarvis, for help with that. The project estimate was for 437000 $250. Uh, the grant will cover 80% of that expense. Um, so thinking that both of these bids will go out this winter and then for, you know, spring for construction next summer. Um, I'm attending the cannabis regulation webinar tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, just to try to get my head around what's, what's that, what's going to happen there. Um, and then the Planning Commission is meeting tomorrow night. Uh, we'll have our first meeting with Two Rivers. They will have already, they have already done a desk review of our zoning bylaws. So it would be interesting to see. I know that the Planning Commission would like to take June and July off um, because Rick Benson will be gone. And so we'll see what Kevin Geiger, where, whoever comes to the meeting for Two Rivers and see what we have for information. Um, I met with Team Better Block last Thursday, spoke with a representative of White River Partnership, and there may be an opportunity for us to partner with them to get the boat launch currently at Peavine removed. It's, it's not in perfect shape and apparently quite underutilized. So there, you know, we talked about maybe taking that one out, leaving the bank there, of course, for people to sit and put down if they wanted, and then, um, but going across the river to the one under the River Street Bridge and fixing that one up properly. So they said that sometimes they have availability to write grants and fundraise and get money and they like to partner with towns to do that. So that's- um, Is that one private property there or is that all town property? It's all town property. Is that? Yep. Yeah. So hopefully that comes through. Um, Green Mountain Pipeline was in town last week, lined the culver under Pleasant Street to the ball field, repaired two catch basins at the rec area, and they just were working on cockadoodle, the structure near there. Um, and then they'll be back this Friday to pump out the remainder of the leaves in the pool. And um, just a reminder, I'm gonna be out of the office Wednesday, May 25th through 
Monday, May 30th. Um, enjoying some of my built up vacation time. <laughs> so you may want to just double check Therese, that river. That I have enough vacation time? Because I got more. I got like a I month. have some comp time. <laughs> yeah. Would you like unpaid comp time? Yeah. I have a gazillion of it. I'll, I'll give you Double a Double check on the River Street. No, it's, it that is. That River Street access, because the only reason why I say it is years ago when we, we redid uh, 107. Yep. Uh, I don't know when that was, eight years ago probably. We tried, we were going to put our trailers in there and we were under the oppression it was the town's land. So we came in and got permission from Keith at the time to put our trailers there. Well, come to find out when we went there to do some, well, we hadn't even put the trailers there, but this gentleman who is a caretaker for some other property owner came down and freaked out on us. I, I wonder and then if it was we ended up getting side. a map and it was, yeah. sure was enough, this, this lady owned a Pelia? portion of it. Huh? Yeah. Was it Pelia's? So you may want to just... No, no, it's like Helen... Mm. Miller. Miller. Helen Miller. Helen so Miller's. apparently a piece of that okay, is well, privately you, owned, so I don't know if... When you go down under the bridge, then, because that's ours. Because the boat launch is like right along the side. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. well, you, you guys like put it in. Accessibility right. of... Well, no, we didn't put it in. It was, uh, what was it, Conservation Camp or something? No, it, yeah. it was a group, it was a group okay. that Town, came yeah. in. I just didn't know if there was oh, so any was issue Helen, with Helen's. somebody. Oh, okay, yeah. Apparently, you have to get from private land down to that, I think. So. Oh, okay. Right. Maybe Because I know we take care of that road. I know so we found out the hard way, so I just wanted to. Okay, <laughs> well, when they go <laughs> we, look into we it. We'll, 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 yeah, exactly. We'll do we that when they come in. We because we got the contact chamber in there. Yeah. That's a big hunk of pipe that goes almost all the way to the river. We'll have to, um, so well, we'll, once I hear from my urban partnership, um, we'll definitely take a look at the tax map. So, no, that's all I have for town manager's report. Oh, wait, you just wanted, I want, I did want to point out one thing, sorry, is to make sure that you saw the nice um, volunteer spotlight on Doug and Joanne Marsh. Mm -hmm. so, just wanted to make sure you saw that. I saw that. All right, and select board meeting minutes from the 9th of, Feb of May. You're safe, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Someone already posted something about how many Fridays until Christmas it was. I was like, come oh, on, stop. Would you stop? Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're not ready for that yet. No. <laughs> Long way. Maybe uh, cut to the ribbon. I wasn't here, guys. I can't second it. No. All in favor? We'll go without a second. Want to just mess Teresa all up tonight? All right. And there was a slew of um, other communications in there. Um, so hopefully everybody had an opportunity to look at those. Yeah, I have a question on the, on the BRTS, mm -hmm. one of these. On the what? The BRTS, you on board meeting minutes? Oh, okay. Uh, forgetting which one, but you mentioned that you had sold, John had sold a couple of containers. Yeah. For $1,500, I think, or something like that. Were they the big containers, like? Lucky, a Lucky's kind of a container? Yeah, that style, but not, uh, like, they were open containers. Oh, okay. All right. Not uh, enclosed. Okay. I was just thinking, because we could use one over That's right. the yeah, emergency. No. Emergency yeah. shelter. He's so, digging uh, deep. Yeah. 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 No, the the board actually opted to keep the, any that were closed. It was just the open oh, okay. containers. Okay. Just the open ones, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just, I got a map to oh, okay. all the property owners in Bethel. Places in Bethel. Allen. I was like, Allen, what? All right, did we have any other business come before the board? Did, Dave, did you have something earlier? About a road. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I've been, uh, I use the, uh, I don't know what the town road number is, but it's a road that goes down into East Bethel from uh, 
the four corners there, probably toward end of Town Highway Six. Is that what they call Morse? No, it's it's Morse is perpendicular. Uh, yeah, perpendicular to that road. The road goes down. It's called the Oxbow Road. Oh, okay. Oh, the I thought you were asking for the name. I was oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure you. Uh, that has been. Um, uh, what's the word I want? Um, Graded? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's been. Uh, Abandoned? Deteriorated? Pretty much. Okay. I mean, I go down there with my truck, and at five miles an hour, the whole truck comes off the ground. And it's not, it's ledge that sticks up four or five inches. Yeah, we haven't, the, the ditches okay. aren't there, the water is running down the road. Roadway, is that it's a three. three. Is it really? Yeah, three. can you believe it? It's, it's a three. really deteriorating. Okay, I'll let Adam um, I mean, it's time on. where it needs either blasting or a <laughs> foot of cover. Hmm. Okay. And going out through from the, at the top, I scratched both sides of my truck with uh, because the roadsides so haven't been mowed for years and, years and years and years and years. Okay. I don't care about that. Is that one of those famous uh, classy roads that look like uh, the one I came across? <laughs> yeah, there? exactly. I didn't know somebody even lived on that road. I thought it was yes. like very freaking bad. In the winter, no one could barely put my truck through it. Well, well no, but it's not in the winter. Winter. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's just too un safe so I, I don't even know why it's a three I just don't but anyway so it needs to be a brush clearing a roads need tension brush clearing roadside mowing uh okay it, and water oh. goes everywhere I mean, it's all right I'll have yeah. Morgan. It's been neglected yeah for exactly. a very long time. I'll have Morgan hmm. drive it and um, I know they were on North Main I talked to him a few minutes before Ford he was like well <laughs> this hasn't been a lot of fun today dealing with there on North Road and um, there was a pipe, some work done that wasn't done, maybe as good as it could have been and um, they had some groundwater coming in there so they're trying to pump that out of the hole they're trying to get it dried so they're, he was dealing with that so they were still at it um, certainly at four so. I did get um, some positive comments in regards to the um, crosswalks and stuff in yeah, town. Yep, and, yeah, absolutely because I yeah. There were some years where it was July and we didn't have them painted. Mm -hmm. So no, we it's had good that they got out there in May and did that this year. We had an agreement that they had to do them before Memorial Day and before Labor Day. And um, we did do, I don't know if you saw um, Front Porch Forum, but we did do a nice post about the bulb outs. And we did put it on Facebook for a couple of hours until the comments <laughs> had take them were down. ridiculous and completely inappropriate. So. They didn't even read it to understand where they're going to go, that we're not putting all of them in or anything. So I had Kelly pull the post. So hopefully people, if you want good information, you should read Front Porch Forum. And um, so there, and I did ask her today to forward it to all the um, committee heads and stuff, so committee chairs, so that maybe they could pass it along to their members about where the bulb outs were gonna go in. And I gave them additional information about the history and what they were, et cetera, et cetera. But the posts were so inappropriate that it just, you know, I just said take it down. Kelly didn't need to spend her weekend fielding that, so. I, I have a question about the crosswalks. Um, I know a few years ago, the state of Vermont came out and gave us a different uh, way to, to mark crosswalks that actually last longer. Yeah, long and we marks. and we've done that in some places, but down here we did the same old red paint, yeah. which by Labor Day will be gone. Right, and they'll do them twice a year. Yeah, I think it was more aesthetic, but they do on on um, Church Street certainly do the the block markings and I think the red originally was because it was stamped into the concrete obviously since the water project you don't have that anymore uh, Morgan had red paint so he was like you know what Let, let's just do it up right and look, make it look nice right now and I think it, at some point yeah it'll probably go to the block style like it is on Church Street and um, but I think he had some he had some of the paint left and said you know what let's just do it up and do it up nice so was his call. I told him he didn't have to do the red, but he wanted to. So. I know one thing, and we had talked about at the board level years ago, and I think maybe there was either you needed to get permission from the state or maybe they wouldn't let you get permission, but I was in New Hampshire this past weekend, 
in a town that had just painted their crosswalks and they do blue. And oh, wow. just because you don't come across many blue things in the road, like it mm -hmm. stood out like, yeah. whoa, you know, that's something different, you know, mm -hmm. where, you know, red is like the color you see all the time, oh, yeah. or, you know. Oh, that is interesting. Um, but I think we had a discussion at the board level one year about an option and maybe Greg or somebody had said, well, there's actually, the state of Vermont doesn't allow for, there's oh, only like know. a couple of colors that you can have it and blue wasn't one of oh, them. Oh, no kidding. But, I don't know. I've never heard that. But uh, I noticed that this week and I said, oh, that was kind of neat. That is. Yeah, no. Because it definitely gets your attention. Like, that's something different. So. Yeah. Um, all right. <clears throat> and then we were just going to um, finish up uh, talking about Teresa's goals. So. Um, unless there's anything else coming before the board, we'll enter into executive session to um, quickly recap and finish um, Teresa's goals. And we won't be making any decisions, so so you'll be able to. Yeah, you're, you're fine. If we do, we'll add it to the minutes. You will make. Have a good evening. Bye on. No, yes, because yeah. you'll make. We'll make an agreement, so it doesn't matter. But I could add it to the minutes, you, you, but you don't need to stay. No, 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 no public decision no, or anything no. like that. <clears throat> Motion to move to executive session to discuss goal setting for the town manager per 1 BSA 313A3. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye.